Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to November 26th, the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, it's looking a little Christmassy in here. Uh, I love this time of year because it reminds us that God made a way for us. He sent his son to show us how to live, to die, and show he has power over death, which means the worst thing that we have here on earth is not the last thing. So if you are able, stand up and let's thank God for what he's given us. Stop working, never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, 
you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're worth it Even when I don't feel it, you're worth it You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Waymaker, miracle worker Calmness people, light in the darkness My God, that is who you are This song is a reminder that there are brothers and sisters all around the world who are worshiping God today. Um, it's been a long time since we sang this, so we're going to have a little Swahili lesson. Four words. Asante, which means thank you. Sana, which means very much. Yesu, which is Jesus. And Moyoni is from my heart. So Asante, Sana, Yesu, Moyoni. You'll catch on. Asante Sana Yesu, Asante Sana Yesu, Asante Sana Yesu no mori. Asante Sana Yesu, Asante Sana Yesu, Asante Sana Yesu yo no mori. Asante Sana Yesu, Asante Sana Yesu, Asante Sana Yesu yo no mori. Asante Sante Yesu, Asante Sante Yesu, Asante Sante Yesu Yomoni. Asante Sante Yesu, Asante Sante Yesu, Asante Sante Yesu Yomoni. Asante Sante Yesu, Asante Sante Yesu, Asante Sante Yesu Yomoni. Amen. Say hello to your neighbor. Good morning and welcome to Sistersville First United Methodist Church. We're so thankful to have you here in person and hello to those watching online. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us all from, from all sin. You are here for a reason this morning, so let's praise the Lord. Um, I wanted to do a reading this morning from Psalm 100, and you can follow along on the screen there. Um, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people in the sheath of his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. What I just read there was a song of praise for the Lord's faithfulness to his people. And this morning, 
We're going to praise the Lord. And if you have any, uh, we have some announcements in the bulletin. Um, today, if you can, stay after church. And we're going to decorate, right? Do more, uh, put the tree up um, for Advent. We would appreciate the help. We'll do that right after church. There is no youth group this week. Uh, we have Bible study at 1 at Wednesday, at 1 at Friendly. Thursday is our after-school program. Um, we're also collecting sets of towels. You can see the box. Looks like it's pretty well full back there. But we're collecting towels for the Faith Hands Christmas baskets. Um, and there are some other announcements there on your on your bulletin as well. Uh, we have some Christmas services coming up. And uh, any any other announcements? What uh, praises do you have this morning? Well, that's wonderful. Well, that's wonderful. Always nice when you can gather it with loved ones. I had the chance to see my parents, but also got to see some some friends. Um, got to hang out with one of my best friends and and see his little grandson, who's just turned one. He's got a full head of red hair, and uh, he's a carrot top. But Alex is uh, growing fast and such a happy, happy little kid, little boy. Um, any other praises? It's always fun. Finals are always fun. But definitely prayers for them. Um, any other any other praises? Any prayer concerns we need to remember? So our, our buddy Wesley has surgery the day after tomorrow, Tuesday, Tuesday. So let's remember Wesley and his family in their travels. Um, any other prayer concerns? Any others? All right. If there's no other praises or prayer concerns, let's uh, go to the Lord with our prayer concerns. Father God, you have heard our prayer concerns spoken out loud, as well as the ones that are in our hearts, Lord. We place them in your care. Watch over these needs and be with those who are in need, Lord. Provide comfort and healing, Lord, where necessary, and provide strength to those in need as well, Lord. Lord, you've heard our, our prayer concerns spoken in our hearts, and, and Lord, you know our needs, and just watch over everything, Lord. Lord, you've heard our, our praises as well. We're very thankful, Lord, so thankful for how you watch over us and provide for us, Lord, and we're thankful, Lord, for the many blessings that you give us each and every day. Lord, as we continue with worship this morning, guide us and direct us, Lord. Humble our hearts to receive your word. 
this morning, Lord, and help us to draw closer to you and, and, and keep you right there beside us. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit, and, and Lord, help us to be better servants for you, Lord. And now we pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. And now we'll have our children's message. All the children are... All the young folks are welcome to come forward and and gather. You know what you're supposed to do. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we got through Thanksgiving, right? And we had all of our thanks and our prayers, and we're moving on. So what's coming up? Christmas, that's right. In the church, there's a time, it's called Advent. A-D-V-E-N-T, Advent. It's four Sundays, and it starts next Sunday. What does the word Advent mean? It means to be in preparation, to be expecting something, look forward to something, be in prayer for something coming up, looking forward to something. So what are we looking forward to? What? Yeah. What goes on at Christmas time? What happened? Why do we celebrate Christmas? The birth of Jesus Christ. Now think about that. The birth of a baby, just like your brother. Right? He's not that old. Did you ever think about Jesus Christ being born? He came into the world as a baby just like all of you did when you were born. He's a baby. He gets hungry. He gets wet. He poops. And he gets angry, and you can't please him. Jesus did all that kind of stuff. And then as he got older, he started crawling on the ground, just like you guys did. Then when he became a little older and he became a toddler and he's walking around and falling down, a little bit longer, he starts running, and he, then he falls down, skins his knee, and who picks him up? Mom. She wipes away his tears. She wipes off his hand. She holds him. Jesus was just like that, just like you all when he was born. That's what Advent is in the church at Christmas. It is waiting for the time that Jesus Christ was born. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. We get presents for people. We put up Christmas trees. We put up decorations. We maybe go to friends or to family that we don't maybe see very often. But why do we do it? It's because Jesus Christ was born. He is the Son of Almighty God. Remember that through the Advent time. We do all these things and we have parties and we have a good time, but it's because Jesus Christ was born as a baby. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing these young people to us today. Help them remember what the Advent season is for not only them, but for all of us in the church. 
Now, if you will please let them keep the belief of Jesus Christ in their hearts as they grow. Amen. Thank you. And we do have Sunday school downstairs if you follow Miss Amanda and uh, Ms. Debbie. And I completely forgot to mention a praise. I'm sure you heard Pat, obviously, he was playing the organ this morning. So thank you to Pat and thank you to Steve for their work on getting that back up and running. Let's give them a round of applause. They spent a lot of time down in that basement working on that. And thank you for your dedication and talents in getting that done. And it's great to have it back. Uh, this morning we're going to be in Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through 46 Matthew 25 verses 31 through 46 and as Diane mentioned we're uh, next week we'll start the beginning of our Advent season and um, some of you may remember last year we did a Bible study called developing a servant's heart by Charles Stanley and one of the reoccurring themes in that in that study was was about how you must deny yourself to be an effective servant for Jesus. And you know, Advent is a time. I, I didn't really think about this till until after the fact, but you know, that Bible study really fit into an Advent, even though it wasn't an, an Advent study. It really fit because. You know, Advent's a time where we prepare. We prepare for the coming of the Lord. And it's a time to prepare our hearts and also do some spring cleaning on our hearts. If there are things we need to let go of, if there are things we're struggling with, it's a time to prepare and, 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 and get your heart ready. And um, this morning we're going to talk about servanthood and what it means to be a, a servant. And so we're going to be getting into some of the characteristics of that here in a moment. Um, before we begin with the verse 31, I'd like to offer the following prayer. Shall we pray? Father God, as we spend time in your word this morning, anoint us with your Holy Spirit that as we Read your word this morning, that it will transform us and help us to be better servants for you. Amen. Beginning of verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats, and he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. And then he will also say to those on the left hand, 
Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we, did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick and in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did not do it to, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. So servanthood is our willingness to go out of our way to meet a need in someone's life and to accomplish something that needs to be done. True servanthood, as depicted in the Bible, is more than just a desire to do what is right. It is dying to one's own desires, and it means that we are attending to the needs of God, of our God and others. The best way to summarize a servant is a person who doesn't exercise his own will, but rather submits it in order to please his master. For us, our master is Jesus Christ. So as disciples, we don't exercise our own will, but instead we give it over not only to God, but to others, so that we can please Christ. Matthew 25, verse 40 says, And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. You know, it's very easy for us to fall into a trap of calling our good works servanthood, which at times, you know, we, we're doing something simply to make ourselves feel better. Or if we're really honest, we're doing it for our own making ourselves look good. If we're to be true servants of Christ and not of ourselves, there are several biblical qualities which we're going to go over. And these qualities are what we should possess to be true servants. In all things, our servant is humble. Being humble in servanthood means you don't worry about who gets the credit for something? Being a humble servant means doing something and not expecting anything in return. If you're serving to get praise or to get a reward, you aren't practicing biblical servitude. It goes back to that concept of denying oneself. You know, in our human nature, we... We can sometimes allow, without even thinking, allow our own self-interest, our own self-desires to permeate through. And to be a true servant means to deny yourself. I'm reminded of a story I heard one time. It was a gentleman giving a testimony about his father. And he was talking about how, how when he was growing up, he never got he, his, he never really knew his dad. I mean, his dad was in his life. His dad was part of the family, and and his dad, you know, you know, set a good example for him and provided for the family and everything. But his dad never really talked about himself very often, and didn't share with his son or with anybody. His dad owned a auto repair shop in a little community. And people would come from all around to have him work on their car. And he can remember, he can remember, he talked about how, he remembers how people would stop by the house 
you know, to pay his dad. But then they would also, you know, people would stop by and he would notice his dad giving them something. And he didn't know what it was or anything. He just would notice sometimes his dad would give people something when they would stop. And he and and he 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 eventually learned, you know, that his dad would help people, you know, if they were behind on a utility bill or needed, you know, their car worked on but they couldn't pay on time, he would he would help them. But it wasn't until his dad passed away that he learned who his dad truly was, because people came from all around to pay their respects, and they were sharing with him story after story about how his dad helped them when they were out of a job or helped them when they had a bill they couldn't pay or, you know, they're, 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 his dad was there for them. And he was just amazed at all these stories he learned about his dad that his dad never talked about. And it, and it caused him, you know, to, to, to realize he knew his dad was special. He loved his dad, but it caused him to look at him in a different way. And, you know, he was sharing this story, this testimony, because those are, that's the kind of servant that the Lord wants us to be. You know, his dad was humble. His dad wasn't doing good work for attention. His dad was doing it to help people, to be there in their darkest times. And, you know, his dad was practicing biblical servanthood. And the title of his, of his talk was Being a, a Gentle Giant. And, you know, that, that's what the Lord, I believe, is calling us all to be, gentle giants. A servant is patient. You know, one of the results of impatience is discouragement. As servants, and I know how hard this can be, believe me, we have to be patient when things aren't going our way so that we don't become discouraged. Now, I just mentioned being a gentle giant. A servant is gentle. In Philippians 4, verse 5, it says, Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. You know, being rough, being confrontational, being demanding does not serve people, does not serve others. It only serves to build a wall between you and those that you're trying to serve. You know, God doesn't call us to be doormats, to be walked on, but he does require us to have a gentle spirit. He wants us to be gentle in our service. A servant is watchful. We must be alert to the needs of others and alert to the direction that God is calling us in. You know, if we're not looking for opportunities to minister to others and to serve them, we're most likely not going to be in service to others. Jesus often spoke about watchfulness. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, watch Stand fast in the, in the faith. Be brave, be strong. A servant is obedient and submits. In service, we have to not only submit to God, but also submit to others. You know, the world teaches self-fulfillment, but God teaches self-denial. Self-denial, it means that you're coming in, coming to understand that we don't have to always get our own way. And that our happiness is not dependent upon getting what we want. I've learned this, that self-denial is what leads to self-fulfillment. You know, one myth, and I had, to, and I believe this at one time, one myth about self-denial is that we lose our identity. Jesus didn't lose his identity when he chose to constantly submit his father's direction. Peter didn't lose his identity when he submitted to Jesus' command, follow me. Paul didn't lose his identity in his conversion 
when he committed himself to God. Self-denial and submission does not mean, again, that we have to be a doormat. It just means we're holding others' interests above our own. Service, and we talked about this a lot in that Bible study we did, service shouldn't be something we do on occasion. Service must be a lifestyle. I found this, this prayer that it was recommended, and it's a great idea, a prayer to say as you begin every day, Lord Jesus, as it would please you, bring me someone today whom I can serve. Lord Jesus, as it would please you, bring me someone today whom I can serve. Richard Foster, who's one of my favorite uh, writers, he wrote the great book about spiritual disciplines called Celebration of Discipline. He wrote, When we see someone intently listening to another human being, we are witnessing service in action. When we see a person holding the sorrows of another in tender, loving care, we are witnessing service in action. When we see someone actively guarding the reputation of others, we are witnessing service and action. When we see simple, everyday acts of kindness, we are witnessing service and action. It is in these actions and many more like them that we begin to get a picture of service. If you strive to make your life an act of service, God will open doors for you like you've never experienced before. God will give you numerous witnessing opportunities. And as you prepare to commit yourself to a life of service to others, be prepared. God's going to give you an endless amount of chances, opportunities to help others and be a light. Let's remember that prayer again. Lord Jesus, as it, as it would please you, Bring me someone today whom I can serve. True servanthood is dying to one's own desires and attending to the needs of God and of others. A servant is patient, gentle, watchful, obedient, and submits. Those are the qualities that Jesus possessed and that he encourages all, this, all of us to possess, to be one of his disciples. As we begin our journey with, on, in Advent and then we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord, let us also use that time. It's my hope we can use that time to reevaluate, look where our hearts are at. I would imagine if we really let God in and let Him look, we would find that there are places we need work on. Humble yourself and let Him let Him do it. Let Him work on you. Self denial. In submission doesn't mean to lose who you are or to be a doormat. It means that you're putting others' interests, the interests of God, before your own. Service shouldn't be something we do on occasion. Service must be a lifestyle. So I'll just say this one more time. I encourage you to remember this prayer. Lord Jesus, as it would please you, bring someone to me today whom I can serve. Shall we pray? Father God, as we conclude worship this morning, Lord, humble our hearts to feel your presence. Lord, enter our hearts today and help us, Lord. Help us to let go of those things that hold us back. 
Lord, help us to humble ourselves before you to receive and receive your will, your plan for our lives so that we can be better servants for you, Lord. Help us to be obedient and submit to you. Lord, help us to be watchful and humble, Lord. Help us to recognize the needs of those around us. Lord, help us to serve one another with love and, and grace as you did. Lord, help us to grow closer to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Now we'll have our, our final hymn this morning. And just a reminder, if you're able to stay after, we'll be decorating. We would appreciate the help. If you're able, please stand and join us as we continue to worship. to be better servants for him and carry his light into this world of, of darkness. May his light shine brightly. Go in peace. Amen.